Want to make a Doom Slayer helmet where it's only got two paints and a couple easy weathering techniques that you can all do at home? Well, let me see. Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Luke and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make a super cheap and easy Doom Slayer helmet that looks like this. We're going to be going through the files, I'm going to be talking about the paint and some really cool weathering techniques which are actually really really cheap to achieve and that anyone can do at home. So the first thing we need to go and do is get some 3D files. Now before we talk about the files, I'm also just going to very very quickly say a massive thank you to Joe Pops 3D for sending these files out to me. He reached out asking if I wanted to build this file and I mean it's Joe Pops 3D, you kind of can't say no, ever. So thank you to him for sending out these files and making this build possible because uh, I'm not, I've never played Doom, I've seen it being played before, I mean it's a sick helmet so I mean there was no reason to say no. Purchase these files is on Wireframe 3D. Uh, and you can see these incredible renders by Joe himself. And they mean, we got a lot of painting, but at least they're really simple colors. You can sort of see that tarnished gunmetal, some of that nice green, uh, some little red little accents here and there, uh, a couple vent pieces, and then some gold. So not too difficult of a paint job. It's more that weathering technique. Now, the renders don't actually show you that it actually breaks down into a ton of different pieces. I believe there's around 20 to 30 something, I can't actually remember, but the whole thing is magnetized together or glued together in certain points. Um, and you can see from this reference, the photo that I've taken, all of the little different resin printed parts and the FDM painted parts that uh, assemble this whole helmet. So I've just done a combination of raw 3D printing, so that FDM and some SLA printing, which is your resin, uh, because I didn't want to sand most of the parts because I'm lazy. So uh, you can choose to do this all resin if you want, obviously it's way a bit and costs a little bit more, or if you wanted to just FDM the whole thing, that's totally fine. Just be super careful with a lot of the spikes and those smaller details. But if you have something like a bamboo or if you've just got a regular printer like I do, uh, just put them onto a really nice high setting and you'll be totally fine. So thank you so much again, Joe Props 3 d for sending these files out to me. The next thing we're off to do is do a little bit of sanding and then also get some weathering before we start painting. Okay, so the next thing to do with this Doom helmet is something a little bit weird. So something that I want to do and have wanted to do for a project for a little bit of time now is a technique called stippling. Now you may have heard of stippling before, it's sort of like a textured sort of thing, uh, but in terms of doing 3D printed props, finishes and stuff, it's a little bit interesting. Now, I will give full credit to Reforged Foam over on Instagram for telling me and showing me this technique uh, that he uses a lot on his Mando armors and stuff. And I like that idea of sort of like it's flaking paint and it's sort of been like it's cracked and weathered and worn. And I think it works perfectly for something, say, the Doom Helmet. So the technique here is taking something like wood filler or Bondo some sort of it, uh, like a filler sort of product, and then watering it down. Watering it down turns it into sort of like a watered paste, which then we can use and apply with a paintbrush. So you wanna take something like this, a really cheap paintbrush that you don't mind getting destroyed because it probably will in the end. Uh, something where the bristles are a bit destroyed and sort of don't look as great. Uh, and this is what's gonna give you the best effect. And the steps is, is just basically taking it, dipping it in the solution and while stippling it over the piece. I understand this is a very strange technique, uh, but I'm mostly going to be going around the areas that are green, uh, which is mostly around these side bits, and a bit up the top. I don't think I'll go as much on, say, like this face mouth piece. I'll be going around those little smaller details and areas, but I'll show you what I do in the end. But I think this is sort of a good concept as I like to do with all of my helmets, is try and find a new technique to learn and practice onto a piece, and I think stippling on this will look really, really good. All right, so let's go through the paint on the helmet. Now, you won't believe it, but it actually consists of two colors. That's it. Now, because this whole helmet is broken down into multiple different pieces, it makes our painting process super easy because we don't need any tape at all. It is just all attached to paddle pop sticks, uh, and then I can paint it once it's dried, glue it all together. So for the gunmetal, you can probably guess it's TS-38. I use this gunmetal on absolutely everything. This is Tamiya's lacquer-based rattle cans. Uh, yes, they're a little bit pricey seeing how small they are, but they go down super, super well. The temperature and humidity doesn't really affect this paint when painting. And I mean, it's protected. Whoops. The gunmetal also works really, really well because it isn't too light. It isn't too dark. It's 
perfectly in the middle. It also takes 2K clear coats if you're super careful with them and you can sort of manipulate them because they are a lacquer based paint. As for the green, which is seriously just this top and the two sides, I just used some TS70. This is to me is sort of like a camo range, I believe it was under, uh, but it's just a nice dark green that fits the Doom helmet perfectly. And then with a little bit of the weathering, like you can see on the helmet, it works perfectly for the helmet. Now, I did go through and clear coat the gunmetal just so I got a little bit of extra shine through it. So I got the contrast of non, well, like flat cleared uh, green and a glossy gunmetal. As for the clear coat, it's just a gloss clear by Jupicolor. Uh, any automotive uh, 1K or just gloss uh, uh, spray paint works perfectly fine for uh, clear coating this. And that's pretty much it for the entire helmet. Now, if you are interested in the whole sanding and prep work behind doing all my helmets, I'll leave a link down in the description of the YouTube video where I go through all of that, explaining my processes and some little tips and tricks on getting them ready for paint. So that's pretty much it for the whole helmet. I then did, once painted, assemble the whole helmet and then started on the weathering, which we'll go to now. All right, so on to the weathering. Now, weathering the helmet turned it from like this to, well, what you see now. It makes a massive difference just using some Createx colors and some rub and buff can really change the entire helmet. Now, originally when I thought I'd make this helmet, I thought let's do a gloss black, let's do a Luma Luster, some chipping, some weathering and that sort of stuff. But I realized I'd never used rub and buff products before. Now, obviously doing the whole gloss black and Luma Luster and the liquid latex and that, isn't really friendly for people who just want to make a Doom helmet, and I totally understand that. Now that's why some of my projects are a little bit more fancy, but I always like to give an alternative on to making it yourself. But seeing this has seriously got two different colors and maybe a little bit of a clear coat, which you can get away with not even putting on. Rub and Buff you can pick up at any local craft store and I mean, you can do the exact same as I've done today. So for the gunmetal, uh, you can notice that on the helmet, it's sort of got that like patchy gunmetal where there's like lighter and darker spots with dirt and that sort of grime through it. And to achieve this, I just used some rub and buff ebony. This ebony is like a dark, like, I don't know what it is. Some like dark colored thing. And it works really well using the gunmetal. I just rubbed it in using just like a really old rag thing, a little bit on the tip of my finger and just rubbed it in. I then went and did that over the entire helmet, just rubbing it into those little spots, trying to buff it in. And well, I mean, it makes a really good effect. That sort of dirty down um, gunmetal makes it look really realistic and sort of all beaten up and scratched up, which then you could probably go through with a scotch pad and just sort of roughen up some of those areas just to make things maybe even a little bit more lighter or a little bit darker. As for these gold trim bits, I was originally just going to paint them using some of the SMS uh, metallic gold, which means you've got to put a gloss black bat down, then airbrush over the top. But then I found some of this autumn gold by Rub and Buff. I wanted to see if it was possible to do their own panels in, well, the color. And well, yes, you can. All of this panel here, the two on the front and the other one on the side are all just they were originally like a gray, like a light gray from the primer. And I just rub and buffed it in uh, and it made that. Mind you, I did use a decent amount of it. Like you take a big glob of it and just sort of wipe it over and sort of buff it in. That's how I found it best to stick. Otherwise it sort of layered through. Or well, the other thing you can do, like I did down the bottom, was spray a light, uh, a light mist coat of uh, gloss black and then buffed it in and well, it sort of gives like a bronze black haze over it. Either way, rub and buff is actually a really good solution in just doing really simple weathering, doesn't cost anything. I mean, each bottle here in Australia, you can pick up for about 13 AUD, which is probably about like I'd say seven US dollars, something close to that. And I mean, the tube lasts, I feel like a pretty long time. I didn't use much of it on this helmet, so that's a really good thing to know. If you want to do really easy weathering techniques, definitely try some rub and buff because I mean, it works really well. Now I will say the last thing I did do is go through with my airbrush as per usual and mix up some of the Createx colors. I used a combination of sapphire, burnt umber, black, and some moss green. I just mixed them up into the airbrush. We're okay. So I just mix it up in the airbrush, open the needle all the way open, and just sprayed really far back, doing really big mist coats of this. I wanted to try and get a nice even coverage over the entire helmet, and then I closed in the nozzle so it was more fine, and then just went through all of the details, 
So around the trims, around some of the sharper edges, and around all of these little marks down the bottom, just to uh, naturally simulate where dirt and grime would hide in. So the combination of rub and buff and some Kratex colors through an airbrush works super, super well in weathering an entire helmet. And the other thing, and you can see it worked really well on the back as well, where I had a little bit more fun, a little bit more trial and error, seeing you don't always see the back of the helmets. But other than that, I'm super happy with how this one ended up. All the weathering techniques just being nice, cheap things that everyone can sort of get. Obviously the airbrush is gonna be a little bit more selected, but if you just use some black wash, you can do probably the exact same techniques as I've done. So with that pretty much all complete, let's go and talk at the very end. So that is the helmet complete. I'm really, really happy with how this one turned out. Uh, I'm really happy with the weathering techniques. Using that ebony on the gunmetal, I think looked amazing. The green with like the little bits of brushed copper and a little bit of that rub and buff. And then a lot of that airbrushing has transformed it a lot. And that weathering technique that I did with using the stippling with that wood filler and water has made a massive difference in just giving that little bit of extra texture through the green and through the gunmetal. Now I will say, did just look at some reference images and I realized that this bottom bit here and here aren't meant to be green. I didn't realize that when I first did it, but that's totally fine. I can always go back over it if I want to, but just so you guys know, tape off this bit of area, just use some frog tape and then spray the same stuff, which is the TS-70, then do the same weathering techniques, and then you'll have a more accurate helmet than I do. And finally, just a massive thank you to Joe Pops 3D for sending out this file, seeing if I was interested in making it, which I am very, very excited because it will be going up on that top little corner. So it'll be in most YouTube videos from now on until I move it again. So thank you so much everyone for watching this video. I will see you all next week where we will be making a Ben Grimm helmet. And the main little key one on that is making some resin printed eyes, which look actually like eyes, not like lenses, but something more fancy. So without further ado, let's head to the final result.